Hi, Gary here. You remember 21 years ago in June on a Friday evening, you might have come home, I know I did, and I was watching on television for a good hour or so, O.J. Simpson's white Bronco going down the highway with this slow speed chase with a bunch of policemen. And it was the first real live event that I recall, you know, streaming video, if you want to call it that. And uh, it was pretty interesting. Wow. <laughs> Fast forward, I can't say I watch many of them anymore because it's kind of hap it happens every day. And the interesting part about this is, is that the news has become, information has become ubiquitous, and we find it everywhere coming from all directions. Now, I'll take a page from the millennials. You know, they're the ones that were born, basically, they're the oldest around 34, 35, the youngest is in their, their late teens. As a group, they are very selective in information. They don't watch television news. They don't watch cable news. They take a lot of their information off the internet, and they're very selective about what they do. And the lesson I'm learning from them, us and the older generations, is be proactive and select the news you want. Now, I've got a little diagram here. Why do you do this? Well, if we take this one circle of your wealth, we take these other two big circles, one's the news, media, uh, and the other uh, major sources from the networks, and then we have the books and magazines and other written material on the other side. Well, very, very little of it applies to your wealth. In fact, it's a very, very small amount. And in many other areas in your life. So it's become more important about what we consume and how we consume that. And the data scientists today have algorithms for that and it's becoming more and more likely down the line that you'll have an algorithm for you to help consume what you want. But the point is, being proactive and really collecting the news that's appropriate to you. Why is that important? Well, you want to continue to make very good, smart decisions about your money. By doing that, you need to have the appropriate information coming in. Now, the information that is coming in, we now know, after many years, and it should be no surprise, that it's primarily negative. Not that there's more negative actual news taking place, is that we have told everybody out there that we really can't help staring and watching at negative news and it and that's what we pay to have given to us and it's not what's happening out there but it seems like that's what's happening and that causes more stress and it causes more frustration anger and maybe even feeling powerless and confused and the important point is in that state of mind you don't make good decisions and you do things that are not in your best interests. So the moral of this whole point, this story is, is to be more proactive of how you consume and what you actually see and read in from the major media, from whatever you're reading out there, and anywhere else. Now how can you do that? Well, you can go to uh, su subscribe to podcasts or blog posts. This is one you're subscribed to. Or you can go to select social media areas. And certainly you can go to the internet and get different news feeds that fit kind of what you need to help you make really good decisions overall in your life. Uh, and it's, it's becoming more and more relevant because we're seeing more and more people coming in being very frustrated and stressed out with everything relative to their wealth. And it's just because of this cacophony of noise of news coming in that's just drowning out what's really occurring. So it becomes very important of, you know, what we see and what we consume to our state of mind and making good decisions. So until next time, enjoy.